Today we're going to take a look at using RAD Cartesian Chart, part of RAD Chart View, which is a brand new control in the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF control suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, we're going to dive into Visual Studio and see what it takes to create a brand new RAD Cartesian Chart, including defining the chart grid, choosing access types, and adding and customizing a data series to display in our running application. Without further delay, we're going to step into Visual Studio 2010, where I've already created a brand new solution, which now includes the Telerik Windows Controls, Telerik Windows Controls Chart, and Telerik Windows Data assemblies for working with Chart View. You can see I created this with the Telerik Visual Studio extension, so I already have my Telerik namespace defined, meaning I can go ahead and step into the code, choose Telerik, Rad, Cartesian Chart. And immediately, if you recall from the original Getting Started video, we can tell that Rad Cartesian Chart gives us a quick access menu and gives us a little bit of information about what we need to set to get data displaying. In our case, instead of going through the quick access menu and choosing a chart type, we just want to go ahead and define our own chart. So of course, one of the first steps we want to take is to find our Telerik Rad Cartesian Chart grid. So Telerik Rad Cartesian Chart dot grid, and we want to create a brand new Telerik Cartesian Chart Grid. Now if we scroll through, there's a lot of things that we can set in our chart grid as we move down. Let's get to something important like major lines. Major lines visibility, we'll say we want both X and Y. Go back down to M, MA. Major lines dash array. So now we can affect how the major lines are going to display. In this case, we'll give it 10.5. Stepping down a little bit further, we can also see we have stuff for major line style, dash array, render mode. In this case, we'll do major X lines render mode, and we have a number of options. We have all, first, first and inner, first and last, inner. We'll go ahead and say all, so we want everything displaying. Now that we have our Cartesian chart grid in place, we're going to have to go ahead and define some of the axes that we want to display. So we'll say Telerik, rad, Cartesian chart. Now, of course, the designer is giving us a little bit of a clue here, so we can choose both a horizontal and vertical axis. We'll do the vertical axis first. We have a number of options available, including, but of course, not limited to categorical, categorical radial, date time, linear, and logarithmic. I'm going to go with a very simple linear axis, no frills attached. And we also want to set, as the designer is now telling us, a horizontal axis. So, Telerik, Rad Cartesian Chart, dot horizontal axis. In this case, we have a few different options. Again, categorical, categorical, radial, daytime, linear, logarithmic. We're going to go ahead and choose a basic categorical axis. Now, of course, one last step. Rad Cartesian chart is nice enough to tell us that we have both our horizontal and vertical axis set, but we need some kind of data series. So for this, we're going to rely on a little bit of IntelliSense again. And we can see we have area series, bar series, candlestick, line series, OHLC, which is useful for different financial types of charting. Going down, we have scatter area, scatter line, scatter point. Spline area sounds good to me. And once again, stepping into IntelliSense. And once again, as we scroll through, there's a lot of different things you can set with this. We remember combine mode. We can set stuff like the dash array. So going either further down, we can see how we can modify the point templates, and it goes on and on. For our sake, we want to set two values. The first is going to be category binding, and this will be what we bind to along our horizontal axis. So we'll be very creative and call this X value. And we also want to set our value binding, which will go to the Y axis. And we use another very creative name for our Y axis binding. Actually, we'll go ahead and stick to the same notations. And now we have all that, but the chart is telling us there's no data. So we can go ahead and step into our code behind. And when this loads up, we want to go ahead and give our data something new to work with. We'll also define a class. This will be chart, chart data class. So we have a public double x value. public double y value to find our chart data class and now we can use that to build a collection 
for this we're going to need a random say list of chart data class chart data equals new chart data class Ooh. new list of chart data class do a nice for loop to add 20 some odd points to our chart and now that we're in this for loop we'll make new chart data classes CDC equals new now like I mentioned X value this is going along the horizontal axis we're just going to set this to our I but the Y value where we're actually going to see the up and down movement on our chart this is going to be random dot next double and we'll say times 100 make it a little something a little interesting and of course we want to add this to chart data and of course in the end in order to bind to these objects they actually have to have names so we can go back to our XAML and say rack Cartesian chart this is going to be X name equals X Cartesian chart and we'll go ahead just for formality give our spline area series a name X X spline area quick format and save so now we go ahead and say X Cartesian chart except this time we're going to pick by series so since we know we have a single series go series index 0 and we can set our item source this is chart data. Oh, that right. Now this is kind of neat because this means that for every different chart series that you have available on the chart, you can define a different item source. I Meaning you can pull in all different types of data from different sources and combine them into a single chart with a lot of relative ease. And now of course our next step is to run the solution and see how this new chart looks. Now Visual Studio loaded up and just like that we have our charting all defined and if you look very closely you can see we have our categorical x-axis we have a linear y-axis we have our spline area series being defined along our data points and we can also see the stuff that we set up for the Cartesian chart grid so in just a few minutes we've gotten up and running with this brand new rad Cartesian chart and we also know some of the options we have setting up a new chart by hand if we didn't want to go the option of using the Visual Studio Designer widget to have it populate a brand new chart for us I hope you've enjoyed watching using Rad Cartesian Chart, and don't forget to stay tuned because this is just one video in a series covering the brand new Rad Chart review for Teller Rad Controls for Silverlight and Rad Controls for WPF. Stay tuned for more.